Well, this should be pretty straightforward, maybe. So I've got a Fluke automotive meter here, and it's a Fluke 88, and the customer included a part. So he's got some test probes here, a couple of spare items underneath. We'll get out of the box, take a look at it. Well, there it is in all of its glory, the Fluke 88 automotive meter. It's pretty much an 87, but instead of having a continuity beeper right here, it has an RPM or Hertz. And then instead of the Delta, it's got percent duty or millisecond pulse. Then it's got a positive or negative trigger. I kind of like that, but I'll stick with my 87 that I've got already. So let's take a look and see what is inside this package that came from JMW in Mesa, Arizona. Some of the other information, as you see, has been redacted here. And what do I have? Fluke 80 Series Multimeter Repair Kit. Let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions real quick and see what it says. So here are the instructions. And I'm just going to go ahead and scan them. And then I'll post them one at a time while you're looking at this for a few seconds each. And uh, yeah, if you need help, you can refer back to these instructions. So let's go ahead and test the meter and see what it actually does before you do any work to it at all. And just in case you're wondering what comes in the kit, this is what is in the little Ziploc bag. These are the zebra stripe connectors that connect the LCD to the main circuit board. Kind of hard to see in the bag, but there are multiple very, very thinly spaced contacts, parallel. You can kind of see the little vertical grooves right there. Those are actually conductive, I believe carbon or plastic of some type that connect the top to the bottom to mate with the circuit board. So let's go ahead and pull this thing apart, but first we'll test it and see what it actually looks like. All right, power on. And I barely see anything on the screen. Sometimes if the elastomers are bad, you can actually apply a little bit of force here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and pop it out of this little over molded case. Then we'll open it up. Someone's obviously been in here in the past and we'll go ahead and check the battery on it. Okay, screws are out. Let's see if it's gonna to wanna to cooperate. And there it goes. You know, there's part of the problem right there. It's got a sunbeam, super heavy duty. Let's go ahead and pop that one off. And I'll go get a real battery to put back in it. So let's go ahead and check the old battery versus the new battery. 4.4, that's not gonna work a bit. New battery, 9.54 volts. Could it be just the battery's bad, not the elastomers? It should have given a low battery warning otherwise. But we'll go ahead and pop the new battery into it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set the case back on it here. We'll flip it over. And yeah, it does have some problems. Some of the segments are very weak. You can see when I power it up here. Yeah, some of the segments are almost non-existent. Like that, the center bar in the three is barely viewable. And the vertical portions of the three is not even there. So, in addition to a battery, it does probably need the elastomers replaced. Try to tweak the frame here. As you can see, as I pressed on it right there, the, the vertical bars kind of came back. And as I'm pressing, it's kind of going away and coming back. So let's go ahead and take this to bits, as Big Clive would say. Well, now that it's open a little bit farther, we can go ahead and try to add a little bit of soft pressure here. Don't want to press too hard on the glass because the glass will break. Let's go ahead and get those guys out of the way. I'm not seeing much changing, but we'll go ahead and do the upgrade and just see how that comes out.
Well, if you know me, I rarely follow the instructions, so I'm kind of just going to wing this thing on my own, and we'll see how it turns out. All right, so there is the LCD display with the original zebra type elastomers on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and very gently try to rock these over and get them to release from the glass. There it goes. So remember the writing goes in the upper corner right there. So that's how it's going to go have to. So that's how it's going to have to go back together. We'll set that out of the way safely. So we're going to leave the backlight in here. I understand it does actually pop out like that. <laughs> it's just got a simple little two pin connector that plugs into the main board. So we'll just leave that sitting there. Yeah, that didn't happen. Okay, so there is the inside of the LCD and I'm gonna to try to tip it so you can actually see the contacts. You can kind of see them there on the bottom and then you can see them right there on the top. I'm just gonna give them a quick wipe off with just a little bit of regular household glass cleaner. Just like with the compact disc players, nothing with ammonia. And then a quick dry. There's a little bit of residue, so I'm just gonna do a slight bit of scrubbing. Now I like that very much. Those look very good. I'm very happy with that. So on to the circuit board. Okay, so there is the circuit board. Normally I'd use acetone, maybe a stainless toothbrush, but these aren't really tarnished too terribly bad. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit them with the glass cleaner again, just like last time. Now these are solder plated, so you're not gonna hurt these things unless you actually rip one off of the board. So it's the only thing I'd be worried about right now. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off these pads, which is where the conductive push buttons attach. And I'll probably wipe off the conductive part as well, just to make sure they got a great connection back to the switches. Okay, I think we're ready for some reassembly at this point. And then this is the conductive side of the push buttons. I just want to give them a little brush off. then a little dry and we should be good. So if you're wondering, that is the other side of the push buttons right there. I might go ahead and take this thing to the sink and give it some household dish soap and a toothbrush and just clean these off. They've been road hard and put away wet many, many times. Okay, new elastomers ready to go in right here. Taking care not to touch the conductive sides. They are attached. There's a good view. You can actually see the minute conductive plastic that's in these things. And 
LCD going back in. And the tabs are attached on the top right there. And the tabs are attached on the bottom as well. Well, I left it in the on position, so let's go ahead and reattach a battery and see if it lights up. Wow, battery connected and that looks perfect. Why is it stuck in the self-test mode? There it goes. Oh, that looks great. Wow, so I'm going to say another one saved from the recycle bin. These are not cheap meters. I think these are on the order of $500 or more. Battery removed. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the case before I put this thing back together. Make it look all shiny and spotless for the customer. And then I'll give you a final result. And I'm not sure how this beeper ever worked if it did. I believe there's supposed to be a spring attached to that post right there. And that post right there, maybe those are conductive. Maybe that's all it is. Because it looks like it's going to make contact right there and right there. So if those are conductive, we're golden. Let's go ahead and check them just for the fun of it. And they are conductive. Look at that. I thought I lost the springs. Nope, my bad. Never mind. Sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and donate a new battery to the customer. And take a look at that display. Much, much better. Make sure it goes off. Power's back on. Let's go ahead and hook up some leads and make sure the beeper actually works. So leads are attached. It's in the continuity range. And I don't hear a beep. There it is. Oh, this one's got a nice loud beeper, too. But anyhow, look at all the segments. Perfect when it powers on. So does this thing have a backlight? I know it does. There it is. Okay, so I have this in the low light mode right now. And you can see the backlight is working. Backlight off. Backlight on. It looks great. Watch your eyes. House lights coming back on. Well, I'm going to say that's it. Replacing the zebra stripes in your Fluke 87 or 88 or whatever version you may have. According to the documentation, it covers 83, 83 Series 3, 85, 85 Series 3, 86, 87, and 87 Series 3, and the 88. Also covers the Fluke 87 and 88 models made for Matco Tools, Kent Moore, and Xerox. That's it, the repair on the Fluke 88 automotive meter. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're done, that hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. 
If you try to contact me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, please be aware, it might be weeks or even months before I respond. I rarely, rarely check those messages. Please, if you want to contact me, use the Gmail address only. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and once again. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye. So it should have been posted by this point. So let's go ahead and test the old meter. So let's go ahead and rip this thing to bits. Well, now that it's open, with just a regular, I believe there's supposed to be a spring attached right there. Oh, you can just barely see it. The camera won't even focus on it. But there is a backlight and it is working. Perfect. Let's do that in manual focus.